Oh, welcome back everybody to another Space Engineers tutorial. My name is Kravak and today we're going to be discussing your lander and the easy way to find resources on some, not all, of the planets out there. So, we need resources and we need them fast. So how are we going to find them? Well, if you press X on your keyboard, you will activate to your jetpack. And if you hit space, you will fly straight up into the air. And in doing so, you can get high enough that when you look back down at the ground, assuming you aren't looking at shadows, you may find some dark areas in the ground or some gray areas like these right here that you can see the little crosshair pointing at. And those are resource locations. Uh, or more often than not, they are. But we're running out of H2. And we need to... Ooh. We need to make sure that we don't run completely out or we will be in bad shape. If you look over in the left-hand lower corner, you will see there are four icons there. A plus sign, O2, a lightning bolt, and H2. The plus sign is your health. O2 is... Uh, oxygen the little lightning boat is your suit energy and the h2 is the hydrogen for your jetpack as you can see the hydrogen for the jetpack is at 36 percent right now so we're going to come over here to our first component on our lander called the survival kit and right on the side here is this little computer display if we press the f key you'll see that it filled up our hydrogen our energy and if we had used any O2 or lost any health, it would also uh, regenerate that. The survival kit is by far one of the, if not the most important item on this lander, because it is also your spawn point. So if you die, you'll spawn back at this um, survival kit and your lander. On the back side of the survival kit, we have this big uh, connection. We press the F key. You can see right here, we are looking at the survival kit itself. And it's got two bars on it. And each bar will hold 1000 liters of something. Uh, the bottom bar is the stuff that it makes. The top bar is the stuff that you input so that it can make the stuff to fill the bottom bar. Uh, it will process certain resources, but not all resources. So the only resources that it will process are stone. Uh, but in general, the first place that you're going to find that you'll get resources is from right here in the ground. And you will fill your personal inventory up. Come over here, place the stone inside the survival kit. And in order to start making iron, silicon, and nickel, You'll come over here to this little production tab and you will see where it says uh, ingots right here. This is actually, uh, it's like trash materials from the stone, right? But you need 100 stone to make one of these. And then one of these will make the appropriate ingots or the various types of ingots. And again, that's something we'll get into later on. On the bottom, you have four landing gear. You'll notice that some are blue and some are green. The green indicates that it is locked to the ground. The blue indicates that it is not locked to the ground. Additionally, you have five thrusters on this craft. You have four atmospheric thrusters. These are the ones in the corner that I'm pointing at now. There's four all the way around the ship. And then underneath the ship, um, we may or may not be able to see it. Eh, kinda. Right where the crosshairs are is a hydrogen thruster. And the hydrogen thruster is another thruster on the craft. And it uses hydrogen as a fuel. Atmospheric thrusters, you have to have an atmosphere to use. So, like on this planet here, it's Earth-like. These would be the thrusters that would be the most beneficial. Um, hydrogen thrusters would be the next most beneficial. And then there's another type of thruster in the game that is absolutely useless inside of atmosphere. And when we get to the thrusters section, we will discuss that as well. Over on the side, 
we have an O2H2 generator. If you press the F key while you're looking at it, you will see that you have an O2 bottle, an H2 bottle, and 300 ice. Ice is required in order to make oxygen and hydrogen. So this is going to be one of the first resources that you want to find on the planet. Um, in the case of an Earth-like planet, it's not that imperative because you can breathe the atmosphere. Um, but it may be a little imperative if you're finding that you're using a lot of your uh, using your jetpack a lot and you'll want to be using these bottles or you'll be refilling a lot in which case you'll still need the ice. On the other side, across from the uh, O2H2 generator, we have the battery. Uh, there's no clicking on it or anything like that. The battery supplies all the power in the case of this ship. Um, they're also used to store power. So we could theoretically connect something to this ship to make it produce power to restore this battery or to recharge this battery. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. And when we get to that section of our tutorial, we will discuss it. There's a lot of sections in this tutorial that I want to discuss, but um, I'm, I'm trying to break it down so that it's a little bit more digestible in smaller parts. And then you as the viewer can watch the parts that are applicable to you. On the front of the lander, we have our seat. If we press the F key, we can get in that seat. And if we hit the I key, we can open up the inventory of the seat. And you will see that the passenger seat inventory contains a weapon, ammunition, and a GPS location. We don't need this GPS location because we kind of landed close to where it goes anywhere. Anyway, which is over there. The UDDC beacon. And yes, that's one of those things we'll discuss later on. Inside, you can see the back of the battery right here. Here's your O2 generator. This right here is a beacon, um, and this is how you find your respawn ship. And underneath that is a timer block, which was used to deploy our parachute when we came down into the atmosphere. These little gray with yellow ends and the little green lights on them are conveyors, and we will definitely be discussing conveyors very soon. And then at the very bottom, you have a small cargo container and we will discuss cargo containers as well and finally on top of our craft this is our antenna our antenna allows us to remotely connect to this craft so if i hit the k and i go into remote access up here i can see that i can connect to this item so if i hit terminal now i'm looking at all the stuff within this lander but the only way i can do that is if there's an antenna on it um if you if i hit k from right here you'll see i'm not connected to anything you know the terminal is not connected so think of it as kind of a I don't know, like wi-fi access and then next to the antenna you see this little uh orb let's call it an orb not the word i wanted to use but let's call it an orb this little orb at the top and that right there is our ore detector. The ore detector, if you look right here, it shows that there is gold below us at 30, let's call it 40 meters. We can see that because the ore detector picks it up. Now the ore detector on a small grid, and this is a small grid item, and we'll discuss grids a little later on. But the ore detector on a small grid only has... A 50 meter range if I set this range to zero and then come back out the symbol for the gold should now be gone and you can see that it's not there so ore detectors are pretty important if you're out resource hunting let's get that turn back on because I will certainly forget later on and be like what is going on all right, so we turned it back on, and there's our ore again. Right there, there's the gold. Everything else is just uh, GPS waypoints. All right? 
And the final thing that we're going to discuss doesn't have to do with the lander or anything specifically, but let's say we wanted to GPS this gold location. What I like to do is I like to look at it and I like to move until I get to the... Right, so it's not moving anymore, so we're 30.8. Yeah, it looks like 30.8. What you can do is you can hit the enter key and then type forward slash GPS and let's call this gold one. All right, and now you'll see that there's a little blue marker there that says zero and it says gold one. If we hit K and go to GPS, you will see now that it says gold one right there and it says it's our current position. Now we can put a description in here if you want to or whatever. I don't normally put one. I just put a name and go about my day. And if we back away from it, we can see that from gold one, we are now 11 meters from it. We're 25 meters, 26 meters from the respawn pond, uh, pod. I'm sorry. So that little trick right there, very useful, particularly when you're looking for resources. Otherwise, you'll have to hit the K button and then go into GPS, hit the new thing, and then create a... It's way too much. Just hit enter, forward slash GPS, type in what you want to call the GPS marker, and voila, you are done. And the next episode, we're going to be discussing the UI and its features more in depth. And uh, following that, we're going to talk about how the progression in the game works in terms of uh, unlocking things and being able to build things in the game. So stay tuned for those episodes, and I hope to see you next time around. This is Kravak, and play to win. Bye-bye now.